The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> The day has been going very well for the water commissioner. He's accomplished a number of things. You bet. He got up, ate a hearty breakfast, and walked down to the office. Yes, sir. I'll get the morning mail off my desk and then... What's this? From the council chamber. The rejected water report. Bessie? Bessie, come in here. Yes, sir, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bessie, sit down and listen to this. Dear Commissioner Gildersleeve, Again, we find your figures in error. Kindly correct your report and return to this chamber immediately. Oh, my goodness. P.S. We like our department heads to be proud of their public positions, but you are the only commissioner who writes his name three times at the bottom of each report. What's this, Bessie? You said to sign it in triplicate. That means three copies, Bessie, not three signatures. <laughs> what a secretary. <laughs> well, let's get out the figures, Bessie. It's as if you've made some more mistakes and I'm held responsible. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, I put down the figures the way you read them to me. Let's not be making our little excuses, Bessie. A mistake has been made. Let's try to maintain an open mind as to who made it. Yes, sir. I'll try. I'll try like crazy. Yes, yes. We'll check your report against my original figures. First column, water capacity, tank A, 6,000 gallons. Oh, there's a five here instead of a six. You see... That makes a big difference, Bessie. A whole thousand gallons. Oh, at least that, sir. Oh, at least that. <laughs> Second figure. Tank B, 8,000 gallons. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, there's a three here. Oh, for goodness sake, Bessie. On the first column, nothing but mistakes. You can't just put down numbers at random. This is a water department we're running, not a bingo game. But, Mr. Gildersleeve... Sixes for fives, eights for threes. Somebody around here needs glasses, Bessie. And who do you suppose it is? I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. I already have glasses. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you have. Well, you need some new ones, then. Come on, Bessie. I'm taking you across the street to see Doc Almquist. By George, we'll have some efficiency around this office. <laughs> Now, miss, cover your left eye and read the top line, please. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> A.J. Uh, please, Mr. Gildersleeve, no coaching. This uh, isn't an audience participation affair. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, tell me what's on the second line, please. A, B, D, E. No, no, Bessie. A, B, C, G. E got C, G. Mm-hmm. The uh, numerals at the bottom, please. Yes, sir. Six, two, eight... Bessie, no wonder my reports come back. That's a three, not an eight. Mr. Gildersleeve, who's being tested for glasses? You or your secretary? Sorry, Doc, but when she makes mistakes like that, I'm the one who's held responsible. What mistakes? The young lady has read each letter and numeral perfectly. Uh, she has? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, Mr. Gildersleeve? Now I'll go back and get out that old report without a single error. Uh, that's fine, Bessie, just so this has taught you a lesson. <clears throat> Thanks for your time, Doc. If there's any charge, just send the bill to... Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, Throckmorton P... Huh? You missed 50% with both eyes. Would you care to sit down? What? Cover your left eye. <laughs> I knew somebody around the office needed glasses. Uncle Morton, Miss Goodwin called to remind... 
remind you of the school board meeting tomorrow night. Ah, yes, school board. And uh, you weren't going to use the living room this evening, were you? Uh, Francie and the kids were coming over to hear records and dance. Well, I thought I might read a little as soon as my dinner settles. Read? Sit by the fire, put on my new glasses. But, Uncle, you have your den. Thought I'd like to try out my new glasses here by the fire. Glasses? What glasses? I just told you, my dear, but you weren't listening. Your old uncle just got himself some glasses. See? Glasses? Oh, Anki. How do they look? Oh, they look fine, fine. What do you mean? Well, I guess you can't remain middle-aged forever. Marjorie! <laughs> Just because I have glasses is no sign. Now, Anki, don't get yourself excited. Ugh. And you stay by the fire and read. I'll tell the kids some other time. Why call it off, my dear? They can dance all over the place. I don't care. I may even dance with them. <laughs> now, Anki, I insist upon calling it off. One evening means so little to us, but each one means so much to you. Now. Now? Hey, Uncle, can I have 35 cents to go to the movies tonight? Movies? Leroy, it's snowing out tonight. I'll bet you have schoolwork to do. Okay, just routine. Leroy, must you always be asking Uncle Mort for money? Gosh, who else would I ask? Well, you might save a little out of your allowance, young man. Your uncle isn't made of money, you know. Yes, and you won't always be able to ask him for it. I won't? Well, <laughs> it may not have occurred to you, Leroy, because you're such a child, but he's wearing glasses. Oh, Marjorie, the way you say that. Hey, neat, Unc. I like the big rims. You do? Well, they're the newest thing. Authors, actors, other men of distinction. <laughs> a little tight around the ears, aren't they? No, I don't think so. Maybe it's because you just ate. Can I try them on? <laughs> what? Can I try them on? Well... I bet they'll make me look older, too, huh? Leroy. Now what did I do? Uncle Mort can't help it if he's getting older. So can't you be a little careful what you say? All I said was... Oh, I get it. Sorry, Uncle. Now, Leroy, there's nothing to be sorry about. And please, Marjorie... Don't try to put up a brave front for us, Uncle Mort. But you have provided for my college education, haven't you? <laughs> Gosh, and I haven't even gotten into high school yet. How much longer do you think you can keep going, Uncle? Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, your old uncle, I mean, your uncle has plenty of years left in him. Look, I don't even need these glasses. I can sit here and read that paper on the floor without them. Uh, the Senate passed the Munt... No fair squinting, Uncle. The Munt bill last Friday establishing, you see, the small print from here. Hey, you're okay, Uncle. I can't read that far. That's wonderful, Anki. Just slight nearsightedness. I don't really, really need them at all. Good. I'll go phone the kids to come over. Here, Leroy, take your 35 cents and go to the movies. I think I'm throwing my money away. No, you're not, Unc. I'll go to see the Jolson story. All about a little boy who grew up and supported his parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might call it an investment in the future. So long, Unc. Take care of yourself. <laughs> I don't know whether it's worse to be pampered or pushed around. Well, I'll read about one chapter before the kids come over. Yeah, they are a little tight around the ears at that. Just emptying the coffee pot, Mr. Gilson. You care for the last cup? Uh, thank you, Bertie. That's very considerate. Yes, sir. Here's a cookie, too. Well. Uh, Mr. Gilson. Huh? Huh? Bertie? That Mr. Stonesife has been talking to me again about cooking for him. He raised the ante. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess bankers can pay more than water commissioners, Bertie. Well, I know I wouldn't be nearly as happy over there for a lot more as I'd be here for a little more. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see what you mean, Bertie. But I guess I can't outbid a banker. We've had some pretty good times in this house, Bertie. Yes, sir. You've seen Marjorie and little Leroy grow up. Get older. I guess I'm a little older, too. Got glasses today, Bertie. Glasses, Mr. Gilfleet? Why, you never wore glasses in your life. No, never did. But we can't stay middle-aged forever. <laughs> Would you mind pushing that hassock under my feet, Bertie? Oh, no, sir, Mr. Gilfleet. I'll be glad to. And can I go get your slippers? Slippers? Well, that would be nice. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Gilfleet. How about a little something over your shoulders? A shawl? Just the slippers. 
And we'll see if we can't find a little more for your paycheck next week. That's good. I'll tell Mr. Stone Cypher I'm set. He can't tempt me with his money. I'll stick by you, Mr. Gilfleet. And I'm a good nurse, too. Nurse? Oh, that's fine, Bertie. <laughs> How much do you think the raise will be? <laughs> well, it'll be substantial, Bertie. That's good. Anything else you want, just holler. And if you're too feeble, wrap your shoe on the floor. <laughs> I think I'll try to crawl up to bed. Uh, hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Yodisley. What can I do for you this fine morning? I'll have to sit down and think it over, Peavy. I'm not quite awake. Very well. Uh, this stool over here will have the sun for about another 30 minutes. Oh, thank you, Peavy. And if you excuse me, I'll go scrape the ice away from the front door. You didn't slip coming in, did you? No. But wait a minute, Peavy. Do you think I look any different this morning? Different? Look into my eyes. And you... <laughs> Mr. Gilbert, please. <laughs> go ahead, Peavy. What do you see? Well, I see your eyes. Yes, but what else? Look closer. Well, one may be a little browner than the other. Oh, my goodness. What else do you see, Peavy? Look around my eyes. Well, I can't see anything else. Your glasses are in the way. That's it, Peavy. I'm wearing glasses. Well, anybody can see that. But this is the first time I've ever worn them. And I am a little concerned about how I look. Well, I can understand how you feel, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've always sort of resented wearing them myself. Oh? Got my first pair when I was 21. I could see the girls better. <laughs> but they stopped looking at me. They did? All except Mrs. Peavy. Well, I don't have to wear them, Peavy. You don't? Of course not. Just a little nearsightedness. But look, I can take them off and read anything in the place. Um, see. Ice cream specials. Chocolate? Vanilla? Tutti Frutti? Yeah, black walnut. Correct, Peavy? Well, not quite. We just have the vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the reading was right. And I can read that vitamin chart at the end of the store, too. It says... No, Mr. Gildersleeve, don't fight it. What? From my experience, I'd say nature has its own little ways of telling us we're slowing up. Who's slowing up? No, it doesn't mean that we won't get just as much out of life. Sometimes more. When you sit down on a park bench, it isn't just to catch your breath, but to finger a flower and talk to a squirrel. Talk to a squirrel. <laughs> and I'd like to say, Mr. Gildersleeve, welcome to the reflective span of life. Oh. Perhaps the most beautiful... Year. Save it for your squirrels, Peavy. I'm getting out of here. But, Mr. Gildersleeve... So long, Edgar A. Peavy. What? Mr. Gildersleeve, watch out for the eyes. The what? Gildy, oh. watch where you're going. Hey. Don't pull me down, will you? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, my fat friend? Can't you see where you're going? Yes, I can see where I'm going, Hooker. Well, I doubt it. No wonder you have to wear glasses. Why, you... I don't have to wear these glasses, and I can take them off pretty quick, too. Now, oh, Gildy, Gildy, let me brush you off. Mm -hmm. Quite a handsome pair of glasses at that. All right, no cracks. And uh, they should help you look intelligent at the school board meeting tomorrow night. I hear we're going to meet the new teacher who's coming to town. Oh? With your blue serge suit and those big rims, you look just like an educated penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you old goat. Now, now, Gildy, don't get touchy. We all have to go through that kidding stage when we start getting on. Speak for yourself, Horace. Now you brush me. I'll brush... Well, turn around. I remember the first time I came into Peavy's here to order my liver pills. I waited until everyone else was out of the store, and then... That has nothing to do with me, Horace. I don't need glasses. But where would you be without your liver? <laughs> <laughs> now, Gilder. Well, I don't need them. See the printing on the door of the bank across the street? I can take these glasses off and read it from here. Yeah. Hours, 10 a.m., 3 p.m. Assets, 2 something. Don't strain, Gildy. You haven't got x-ray eyes like Superman. I'm just proving I don't need them. Then why are you wearing them? They don't make you look any younger. Well, I'm not going to wear them anymore. Wait till I see that doctor. I'll bet he's the one that needs glasses. The 
Mr. Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in a minute. You know, that birdie is more than just a good cook. She's a smart buyer. I overheard her say to the grocer the other day, Yes, sir, I want parquet margin. There's a spread that's kind to my food budget. Birdie, is that the reason you like parquet? Because it costs less now than it did a year ago? Oh, Mr. Walsh. No, economy isn't the reason. It's just one reason. I buy parquet because everybody likes it so much. Right. Parquet just can't be beat. There's a topping for rolls, toast, pancakes, waffles. Why, parquet is the favorite spread for bread on millions of American tables. Sure is a favorite on our table. Naturally. Parquet is made from the finest products of America's farms. It's smooth and nourishing. It has that good, fresh country flavor. And each pound of parquet is enriched with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. 15,000, eh? That's good. But I buy it because the Gillsleeve folks like it. Well, everyone likes tasty parquet, Bertie. Millions of women all over America serve delicious, nourishing, economical parquet margarine just because it tastes so good. Join those millions, friends. Ask for Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. Well, let's return to the great Gildersleeve, who knows better than anyone that he doesn't need glasses. He even knows it better than his doctor. M-N-T-Z-G. You see, Doc? I can read anything you have on those slides. Yes, you apparently can, Mr. Gildersleeve. Very strange indeed what a man can do when he wants to. You bet. I don't need these glasses. No, you don't need these glasses. No, sir. You need another pair, which I'll prescribe for you. A what? You have a severe case of eye strain. Eye strain. Perhaps from proving to too many people that you don't need glasses. But, Doc, all I did I'll give you some eye drops to be taken every three hours and prescribe some temporary glasses to be worn while you're on the drops. But, Doc... They'll uh, dilate the pupil a little, and if you don't wear the glasses, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're liable to be running into posts for a couple of days. Uh, Don't take them off. What? They'll be ready in about an hour. Uh, Now then, uh, can I see you to the door? No, thanks. I can see the door. Glasses feel about the same as the others. A little darker, though, maybe. I'll be darned if I'll wear them out on the street where people can see me. Uh, The doc was right. Can't see a thing without him. (laughs) Didn't mean to bump into you. Pardon me, old man. Who's an old man? Oh, sorry, Sonny. Well, he was short like an old man. (laughs) Sorry, lady. Rock Morton, do you make a habit of bumping into people on the street? Sounds like... Well, it is Eve. Rock Morton, do you have to put on glasses to recognize me? Well, I just left the eye doctor. He said to wear them. My goodness, they make quite a difference. Well, with me, it isn't that I need them. I just can't see without them. <laughs> Taking eye drops. Just have to wear them for a couple of days. <laughs> oh, Rock Morton, you're as sensitive about your looks as a young girl. And I quite understand... I'll never forget when I first put on glasses. That was, oh, ten years ago. Ten years ago, huh? How old were you then? I was... (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess there comes a time when we're all sensitive. But soon you'll get used to the glasses. In fact, I find them an asset. Yeah, but Eve, you're the school principal. Everybody expects it of you. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. But they really do something for you, Throckmorton. I rather think they give you uh, an air. Uh Uh-huh. I looked at a woman in the she'd give me the air. Really, Throckmorton, I think the glasses add immeasurably to your uh, charm and dignity. You no, know they... They do? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they, they definitely give the impression of, um, shall we say, intellectual stature? Yeah. Let's say intellectual stature. <laughs> and I like the design you've chosen. They're very becoming. Uh, thanks. Same type General Eisenhower wears. You know, the new president of Columbia University. Rock Morton, you've been reading. Yeah, last night. <laughs> well, you can show off your new glasses at the school board meeting tonight. I have to go in the store now. Oh, yeah, school board meeting. I think I'll skip that, Eve. Oh. And I wanted to introduce the members of the board to our new eighth grade teacher. This is her first assignment in the upper grade. Oh, is she young? She... 
Looks quite young. Mm. Rock Morton. Mm. None of your flirtations now. Oh, no. You know me. Yes, I know you. <laughs> well, see you at the school board meeting, Eve. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> I always loved the eighth grade. <laughs> gets the idea that I'm flirtatious. Man has a right to look around. Guess I'll ask Judge Hooker to go to the meeting and sit with me. He's older than I am. <laughs> hey, he's in his private office with a client. Looks pretty. Better take off my glasses. She looks a little young to appreciate intellectual stature. <laughs> Phew. Now I can't see again. Well, I'll be able to tell her from Hooker. <laughs> Oh, Judge, pardon me. I'll be with you presently, Gildersleeve. It'll only take a minute, Judge. I just wanted to see... Uh, didn't know you were in conference. Gilder? Pardon me, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do? Miss Ray, if you'll excuse this highly irregular and unexpected interruption, allow me to present a member of our school board, Mr. Gildersleeve. We have others, of course. Well, are you... Miss Ray is our new teacher. New teacher, eh? <laughs> it's been my pleasure and privilege this afternoon to acquaint her with a few matters pertinent to her new position. Judge Hooker has been very kind. I, I really feel at home. Well, we want you to. Like me to introduce you around before the meeting? Miss Gray is to meet everybody tonight, Gildy. Thank you just the same, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm waiting here for Miss Goodwin. Oh, Eve. Yeah. And imagine what's keeping her. It's five o'clock now. I'm terribly sorry, Judge. I'm afraid I'm keeping you from your work. No, 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 not at all. But I do have some letters to sign. Letters? Then we better get out, Judge, and leave you alone. Until Eve comes, I can show Miss Gray the city hall. Oh, I'd love to see it. I'm anxious to learn all I can about Summerfield. Good. And we better start in my office. I'll show you the plans for the waterworks. Gilda. Come along, Miss Gray. See you at the board meeting, Judge. <laughs> I didn't realize being water commissioner was such a monumental job, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I suppose it is a big job for such a young man. Uh, oh, I wonder what happened to Miss Goodwin. It's getting quite late. Well, if Eve doesn't show up, I'll see that you get to the meeting. We could go to dinner and make a night of it. Uh, Attend the school board meeting, then take in a movie. Oh, I don't think I should, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's my first night here, and well, after all, I, I am a teacher. Well, we could see an educational picture... The Jolson story, all about a little boy. Oh, that's very nice of you, really. But do you think Miss Goodwin would approve? Eve, don't you worry about Eve. I know how to handle her. Oh, well, I... I, uh... Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I've broken my beads. Your beads? Oh, huh. too bad. Here, I'll pick them up for you. Oh, thank you. I have a horrible habit of twisting my beads when I'm nervous. No need to be nervous. Yeah. Don't see any over this way. Well, they're all around your feet, Mr. Gildas, please. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> to find these little things, a person almost needs glasses. <laughs> that is, if a person needs glasses. <laughs> How do you feel about glasses, Miss Gray? Oh, I wear them all the time in the classroom. You do? Yes, it helps the discipline. Makes me look older. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll remember that if I ever want to look older. <laughs> How many beads were there? Do you know? I'm afraid not. I'll get these over here behind your chair. Well, we'll see them. Oh, put my knee on one. Rock Morton. Oh, is that you, Eve? Rock Morton, what on earth are you doing down there on the floor? Uh, just picking up a few beads. <laughs> oh, I I've been looking all over for our new teacher. Miss Gray? Well, she's over there behind my chair. I beg your pardon. Oh, Miss Goodwin, we've been waiting for you. I, uh, I'm i afraid I've imposed on Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't you believe it, Eve? It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I'm sure it has, Throckmorton. <laughs> well, I think some of the beads rolled into the next room. Uh, may I look, Mr. Gildersleeve? Be right ahead, Miss Gray. In fact, I think I'll go in and help her look. Just a moment, <laughs> Throckmorton. Ha. Huh? As principal of the school, I feel an acute responsibility for Miss Gray. Oh, so do I, as a member of the school board. I want to do all I can, Eve. I'm just showing her around. She doesn't know anybody yet. Rock Morton, just because she's pretty and new in town, must you besiege her before she even gets settled? Well, she has to meet people. Yes, and I want her to meet some of the young men in town, not just the men who act young. Uh, well, 
<laughs> now, I'll go take Miss Gray to dinner. Will we see you at the meeting? At the meeting? You bet. And Throckmorton, promise now, none of your foolishness. Steve, all I can say is, you sure know how to pick them. <laughs> Well, looks like a small meeting tonight, Gilly. Yes, it does, Judge. Sit down. I wonder where everybody is. Yeah, I wonder. Didn't she come with you, Eve? Miss Gray? She's right over there talking to Dr. Pettibone. She is? Oh, yeah. You better put your glasses back on, Gilly. Now you can't even see people. <laughs> I'll thank you to lay off the subject of my glasses around Miss Gray. Throckmorton, aren't you being a little vain? Well... Hey, excuse me, I'll have to stop the meeting. What are you trying to hide, Gildy? Everybody else knows you wear them. Well... Oh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Miss Gray. Oh, Miss Gray. Like to sit by me? Got a place for you. Well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but don't you want that seat? I'm sitting on two. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> oh. Now that most of us are here, we'll call the meeting to order. Sorry we didn't go to dinner, Miss Gray. Oh, that's all right. What kind of food do you like? Chinese, Italian, Armenian? Quiet, Gildy. Mr. Gildersleeve, we'd better be quiet. May we come to order, please? Of course, they have good steaks at the Summerfield Grill. T-bones. Mr. Gildersleeve. What? Oh, <laughs> we were talking about T-bones. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> guess the meeting has started. Our president, Dr. Needham, is unable to be with us this evening, but he's prepared a message of welcome to our new teacher. Well. And since I suddenly find I have a headache... I'd like to call upon Mr. Gildersleeve to come up and read the welcome. Read it? But Eve, you know I can't read unless I put on my... The great Gildersleeve will be right back. On bread, on rolls, on muffins, pancakes, and waffles, parquet is a favorite spread. You'll insist on parquet once you try it. It's delicious and nourishing. It's an important diet factor, too. Each pound of fresh-flavored parquet margarine contains 15,000 units of important vitamin A. Always a favorite spread for America's bread, parquet now is more a favorite than ever. Because in spite of rising food prices, parquet actually costs less today than it did a year ago. For bread and budget, parquet is a better buy. Try it. That's parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ah, good morning, Bessie. How are your eyes? My eyes? Oh, fine, Bessie. Eye strain's all cleared up. This came from the doctor, and I don't need glasses anymore, except for fine work. Oh, wonderful. Uh, shall we put on our glasses and finish the water report? Well, uh, sorry, Bessie, but I have to drive by the schoolhouse. Another board meeting? Oh, no. Just about time for recess in the eighth grade. <laughs> oh, uh, better take my glasses. She liked the big rims. Said I looked like... Uh, Bessie, who's this Robert Walker? Robert Walker? That's all I wanted to know. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Curry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Nicholson. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Does your family like macaroni and cheese that's fluffy light with golden cheddar cheese flavor through and through? Then get Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. One package of Kraft Dinner contains enough quick-cooking macaroni and golden Kraft grated to make a dish of macaroni and cheese that will serve four people. It's a swell Lenten dish, a fine, thrifty main dish any day of the week. Remember, Kraft Dinner cooks in just seven minutes. So for quick, swell-tasting macaroni and cheese, get Kraft Dinner. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.